on the plow area I'm just working some of that rust and everything into the areas on the opening slots for the MU cables there's going to be a lot of that rust and grind coming down then you're going to get a lot of the kick up coming up on the plow like that so after I've done that go ahead and switch to another brush and I'll start layering in some of the white as well that way we can get some of the dust effects because areas like this are always going to be getting the most dust build up and everything like that so I'm just going to come in here and really give this plow a good working over with some of the powders on the roof we're going to be doing a little bit of soot uh, and this can vary on prototypes from being pretty heavy uh, to pretty light it just depends uh, in this case with the 62 or 6112 so on the 6112 here, I'm going to be doing some of the soot effects. A lot of these units get this on G's and EMDs. What I like to use is the powders. Um, some people like to use an airbrush or paint method. I used to do all dry brushing effects uh, to do this, but I've since abandoned that. And I just like to use the uh, soot black just because it's a lot more realistic in the sense that it looks like greasy, oily, dusty exhaust. It just looks very good. It's very convincing for exhaust. Uh, remember that this color is going to be concentrated too, mainly around the actual stack itself, around this area, and it's going to extend out. I'm not going to be trying to cover the entire radiator section, but it is good to stretch this color around a little bit, work it around a little bit, because this does um, go all over the place. I mean, these areas do get pretty greasy. I even like to scrub it in certain areas around bolt details and stuff. But just remember that heaviest concentration is going to be right around that vent where you're going to see that. And then just basically fan it out from that point on. I'll work some of this powder very gently into certain areas around the cab roof where some of that exhaust might collect. I do this very carefully. Mainly on top of the AC unit, areas like that. And then what I always like to do, because you'll see this a lot in these engines, you'll see some of this exhaust streaking down the side of the cab roof kind of like this. You'll just get these very fine little streaks. I'm not going to go too crazy with that. I just want a very subtle little effect of this exhaust streaking down. So I just go in with the brush and just get in my little... By now you've probably noticed I've reinstalled the handrails and I usually keep these off till the very last stages once I'm done with all the deck work and everything like that. Then I'll go ahead and reinstall them. Uh, as long as they're not in the way while I'm doing all the fine work on the uh, sides of the engine and stuff like that, um, I'll just keep them off. We've got them reinstalled now. We can go ahead and weather them. What I basically do for these is I take a quick wash uh, for most engines. The handrails on this locomotive are pretty clean, uh, but these do usually get a pretty uh, heavy wash, uh, especially in the higher traffic areas like around the uh, cab itself. There'll be a little bit more chipping and stuff like that. Uh, generally around that area I'll do a little bit more rust uh, but from er most everything else it's just a very light wash and I use a liner brush pretty much to do this and with uh, progressive layers of acrylic you can also do this with the uh, oils as well now going back to the mud splatter technique I like to have the splatter on the pilots uh, I'm going to be doing the back one here with a little bit of my light gray to represent some fresh rust with this I just go kinda light try to concentrate that splatter in the areas where the most kick up is going to be kind of around the MU cables just go very lightly with that effect too just keep it very subtle you don't want too much just enough same thing on the front here I've actually done a little bit already on the front plow but I'll go ahead and add just a little bit more now that this is kind of dried again just mainly concentrating around where the kick up is going to be there we go so with the weathering pretty much completed, we can go ahead and install the final little detail parts. Uh, I always wait to add certain little details until all the weathering effects are done in case I'm potentially knock them off or anything like that. In this case, the only details we got to install now that we got the model pretty much completely assembled and uh, weathered up are just the uh, lenses for the ditch lights right here. And then we got the MU receptacle covers right here. The reason I left these off was because I was debating if I was going to put an MU jumper cable on the model or not. Uh, in all the prototype photos I have of the 6112 though, I can't find any photos of it with a jumper cable, so I'm just going to leave that part off and just go ahead and install the covers. 
Alright, so the very last step is something I want to touch on real quickly, uh, and it's the importance of cleaning your wheels after a project like this. Uh, the same can apply for rolling stock, but in particular for locomotives, you want them to run well. And the thing is, after a project like this, your locomotive wheels are going to have grime, you're going to have clear coat, grease, dirt, chalks, powders, paints, all kinds of stuff all over those wheels. It's important that we clean them off for the model to run properly afterwards. So, what I have here on my uh, kitchen counter here, I just have a simple setup of Bachman Track uh, power pack. And I'm going to be cleaning the wheels with a little bit of 70% isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel. Uh, this method is very simple and easy and quick to do, uh, but it again is very important uh, because we want to make sure our wheels are cleaned. Uh, this stick here is just a piece of styrene. I'm going to be using this and I'm going to just basically take the alcohol like this. And the stick is going to be a guide. Similar to what you'd do if you were uh, pouring paint out on a pan and you wanted it to be precise and not spill paint all over the place, you use a guide stick. And that's basically how you do that. Just get enough alcohol on the paper towel uh, for even coverage so that you're getting both rails. And then you can start with what, whichever truck you want on the model. In this case, I'm just going to carefully pick up the model. And I'm going to guide it onto the track as carefully as possible. Just like this. I just like to run the locomotive on full power for a second to really make sure those wheels are getting cleaned. Just like this. Just make sure they get it nice and clean. I usually do this for a few minutes too and just carefully rock the thing back and forth a little bit like this. And then I'll back the throttle back down and we can take it off. And as you can see, wow, look at that accumulation of dirt and grime. That's just what came off of the rear, uh, the front truck there. That's insane, isn't it? If you need to, you can repeat this process. In this case, I might actually run the wheels back over a cleaner section of paper towel like this and repeat the process. And I'm also going to do this for the rear truck as well. The other quick note on these locomotives, usually for me, what I'll do with a new locomotive or an older locomotive like this that hasn't been run in quite a long time, I will usually take the locomotive after I've cleaned the wheels, put it on an oval of track, and I'll just run it around in laps for about 30 minutes to really get everything uh, loosened up, get everything moving again. Uh, just to double check running operation and everything else, uh, just as that final precaution to make sure everything's working just fine. And a hundred years later, we finally have the HLCX 6112 completed, detailed, weathered up, and it looks very nice. Uh, you can see all of our nice little details. The weathering came out really well. I'm really happy with this one. This is another fun project. You just can see all the fine detail work. The front, all the um, all the scraped up deck work came out really well, you got the beat up handrails, all kinds of chipping effects, scratched up cab numbers, all of our fine washes, get you a nice good walk around of the model, get that nice dusty grimy fuel tank, it's all looking really good. Darkened grills. All this came out exceptionally nice. You can see all that rust. It looks really good. Darkened grill on the back there. It's a good look at the truck weather. You can see how dusty and powdery they are. Looks really nice. And there's our rear pilot work. You can see all that splatter. Mud, grime, rust, streaking, everything like that all the patching and everything. All looking really good. On the top there you can see all that nice good rust we got. On the top grill. Around the horn. The horn's nicely weathered up. There's our nice fans. Exhaust and all the nice cab details as well. And if we carefully move this now, we'll get to the opposite side. With all of our detail work completed. All that looks really good. This lights have the lenses now, and then there's all the patching on the nose. All the detail work. Looks pretty good. And then of course the conductor side of the 6112 here. 
All that grease and grime just looks excellent. See all the walkway work? Okay. Rear grill there, all looks really nice. The model just turned out really nice in, in general. I love these tunnel motors, these are so much fun to do. Again, there's that really nice fuel tank work that we've done here. And of course the trucks with all that nice powder. Powder work done. Really makes a world of difference to use powders on these. It makes them look so much more realistic compared to just using uh, using paints. It looks really good. And that's pretty much it. That's the 6112 right there. Another really cool prototype model, ready to go into service. And with that, that pretty much wraps up the 6112 build, guys. I hope you liked the video. I know this one dragged out a little bit. There was a lot of steps to cover. But you guys can see just how much of a level of detail I put in these locomotives. And not just my locomotives, but my rolling stock. I really like getting all the textures. I like getting all the techniques in, all the streaks, all the fine little details. Uh, this video really showcases that. And my standards for weathering have really gone up. I mean, I do a lot more to these things than I used to. And projects like this normally take me a couple months. Uh, that's the thing. A lot of people want me to do locomotive projects for them and then they wonder why, well, they take so long. There's so much to them, as you've seen. There's so many details and so many effects you can do on them to make them look good. And they always do. They always come out really good if you take the time. Uh, if you really like these videos, you know, I'm glad to keep making them, and I will definitely keep putting them out. I really like to be able to show you guys these techniques, and again, there's a reason they're so long, because there's so much to show. Uh, like you've seen in this video alone, there are so many techniques, and I want you guys to be able to learn from these, build upon them. Don't copy me exactly. You don't have to. You don't have to copy every single technique I show you. They're merely out there, so you guys can take them and apply them to your own methods, learn from them, and build on them basically is what I want to show with these videos. So I hope you guys like this video. Uh, I'll be having some more coming up here. The next, I'm going to be doing some rolling stock weathering videos. I'm going to be bringing some of those back. I got a hopper car and a box car, modern rolling stock that I'm going to be weathering in the next uh, video weathering series. So you guys can stay tuned for that. In the meantime, subscribe here on YouTube for more content. I'm always posting videos and such on my work. Follow my work on Facebook and Instagram. My Instagram currently is Danny Dankinson. That is all lowercase. You guys can follow me there. Check me out on my Facebook page, Dance Custom Trains. My name is Daniel Arnold. You can again follow me there to see what kind of projects I'm working on and stay tuned for more. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching this video series, and I will see you next time. Take it easy, guys.